Welcome back to the channel guys, I'm Dr. Dawson and today we are going to talk about feline immunodeficiency virus. Now this is a virus that infects many thousands of cats every single year. If you found this video, you were probably searching for it. And if you were searching for it, that means you probably have a cat that was recently diagnosed with it. So we're going to go a little bit first into what FIV is. If you wanna skip that and go right to prognosis, treatment, progression, all of those things, I will leave a link down in the description to skip to that point first. FIV is a retrovirus. Now, what makes a retrovirus? What kind of retroviruses are there? Well, there's lots of different types of retroviruses in animals and even in people. One of the most common that we know of in people is called HIV. Most of you have heard of this as AIDS. Now, FIV is almost considered kitty AIDS in a lot of ways, especially when they get clinical. And it's most similar to that. And so we relate it a lot to human HIV. Now, in the case of a retrovirus, what makes it and puts it into this family and this category of viruses is its ability to take a single stranded nucleotide, which is the genetic code that it has in its own capsule. And that's when it's a free virus, that's what it is. It's a protein capsule that surrounds a single piece of RNA. Now, I'm gonna show a thing up here that shows the difference between RNA and DNA. Now there's a lot more in-depth things, but what you guys need to know is that RNA is a single strand of nucleotides. So it's single strand and it makes one helix. So one side of the double helix that we're, we typically will see with DNA. Now a retrovirus is able to take a single strand of RNA and convert it backwards into DNA. Now, this is important because when a retrovirus infects a cell of an animal, it actually will integrate that single strand of RNA, convert it backwards into a DNA molecule, and it will put it inside of the cell's genome. So essentially, what has happening is this retrovirus is taking its own DNA and putting it in its host and it's changing the DNA of its host. What's important about this is that it is extremely hard to kill retroviruses. So in the case of influenza, once the body has finished killing all the viral particles, usually it's going to be cured. However, in the case of a retrovirus like HIV or FIV, it's actually extremely difficult to kill it because even if you kill all the free viral particles, that DNA is still integrated into the host genome. And so if the right event happens, it can actually relapse into yet another infection. FIV and FELV, so FIV is feline immunodeficiency virus, and FELV, feline leukemia virus, are sometimes confused. But they're very different viruses. However, they're both a part of the retroviridae family but there's a separation. They do different things. And that's why they typically will show very different disease progressions. FIV is part of what's called a lentivirus. Lenti basically means slow progression. Um, and there's a bunch of other lentiviruses. HIV is one of those. However, feline leukemia virus is part of what's called the onco-retroviruses. Now, onco is a prefix in Latin that essentially means that it causes cancer. So the way that it integrates into the host genome makes them more prone to developing cancer compared to FIV. Now FIV still in rare cases has been shown to maybe be a part of some of development of cancers in cats, but mostly it's going to just kill the immune system and, and make the cat have a difficult time fighting off secondary infection. The next video is gonna be FELV, or feline leukemia virus. This video is all about FIV, but they both are gonna be mentioned at the same time because often they're tested for at the same time, and often we find that people are confused about which one is which, so we want, I just wanna mention that they are both a part of the retroviridae family. What does FIV do? Well, once a cat is infected with FIV, FIV will actually start to attack the host's immune system. So just like HIV in people, 
it will make them immunocompromised if given enough time to infect and kill enough of the immune cells that are in the body. And also like HIV, FIV in cats can last for years and there may be no symptoms at all. And it may be that it takes three, four, five, six years, or maybe never that the cat will actually develop what we call feline AIDS. So this is really good news is that, you know, in cats that are infected with FIV, they may never show any clinical signs, um, or it may be very many years before they do. Um, some cats will show them more often, but even if they do sh start to show symptoms of immunodeficiency, essentially what we can do is treat secondary infections and through lifestyle management, we can control their environment to a point where they're less likely to get these infections. And if they do develop them, often we can treat them with proper antibiotics. So how is FIV spread? Well, often FIV is spread between cats out in the wild. It basically does not stay in the environment very long. And if it's not in a cell, its lifespan is very short. Um, so most commonly what we see is a cats that are infected are infected through bite wounds. So this actually makes male unneutered cats the most likely cats to develop FIV. And the reason is just because they're much more likely to come in contact with other cats and they're much more likely to fight because they're territorial. So outdoor unneutered male cats are the highest risk of FIV. One thing to note is that social behavior does not usually spread FIV. So what I mean by social behavior is usually it's not spread through fomites, so water bowls, food bowls, litter boxes. Um, it's also not usually spread by grooming. Um, that's a little different than FELV, which is sometimes spread by grooming, um, but FIV is not. Not that it can't be. Um, there's always specific circumstances that can contribute to it being spread more likely or more commonly. As a rule, obviously there are exceptions. It's not spread through these um, social behaviors. So how do we diagnose FIV? Well, our testing sometimes can be very difficult because what we're testing for is the antibody. And the reason we have to test for the antibody for FIV is that a cat that has had this virus and is currently infected may not have any viral particles in their bloodstream. Um, if they, their immune system beat it the first time, there's still DNA in those cells, but there's no viral particles floating around and so it can't be tested for specifically. But we can test for an antibody. It's a little immune protein that attaches to foreign objects and it's usually pretty specific for a specific antigen. And the immune system learns how to produce these and fight off specific infections. And that's why vaccines will typically work is we're trying to produce an antibody response, which will bind up or capture those viral or bacterial particles, whatever it may be. So the unfortunate thing is, is even a cat that has beaten the virus and beat the initial infection and it never really started integrating into the host genome will still test positive. The other thing that's really unfortunate is that there is a vaccine, but it doesn't really work. Um, it has a very, very low success rate and very, very few clinics in the country will even give it out, um, even in under special circumstances. Uh, but if a cat did receive that vaccine, they're going to test positive and there's no way to really tell between a vaccine and them having cleared an infection or if they truly are infected. And in kittens, if a cat, a kitten develops FIV or test positive for FIV on a test, we also don't know, was that just maternal antibody? So was that the antibody that the mother kitten or the queen passed on to their kittens? We don't know. And so we recommend testing every eight weeks until they're out to six months. If they're still positive at that point, we would say that they are truly positive. So what is a lifestyle need to look like for a cat that has FIV? Well, typically we're gonna recommend that they're not with other cats. And this is just so that other cats don't develop the disease um, as the cat that is currently infected may live for a long time or may die soon. We don't know for sure, but we never know how other cats are gonna react. And we don't wanna spread this if we can. So if an outdoor cat or a stray cat comes pack positive with FIV, often they're gonna either be put into a rescue where they can only go to a single cat FIV positive home, 
or a place where there are lots of FIV positive cats and only FIV positive cats. The other option that unfortunately many people end up doing with strays is euthanasia. If you bring an FIV positive cat into your house and your other two or three cats get this disease, it can be really hard to do that to them. Really, there are so many cats in the world that many people just don't go through the effort of trying to find a home, or if they can't find a home, then there's really not a lot of options because we don't want them back out in the wild where they're gonna infect other animals. We're not, we don't wanna try to infect other animals with FIV. But in a cat that does have FIV, you're a single cat house, great, fantastic. There's no reason to really treat them any differently than a normal cat other than make sure they're indoor only, making sure that you're keeping a really close eye on all of their health issues. If they start to have a runny nose, if they start to act a little abnormal, get them checked out immediately because we never know when a secondary infection is gonna hit and it can be a catastrophic if we don't catch it early. So if you know your cat is FIV positive, make sure that you're keeping a really close eye on them and bring them to a vet even if you think maybe something is wrong but you don't know for sure. The good news is, is that a cat with FIV can have an exceedingly normal life. The majority of cats that do have FIV can live long and normal lives uh, in single cat households or FIV only households. So how can you prevent your cat from getting FIV? Well, the biggest thing is just keeping them indoors and making sure that they are spayed and or neutered because they're much less likely to get into fights where the transmission is much more likely. There is a vaccine, as I mentioned earlier, it's not very effective. I wouldn't even touch it. Um, even if your vet is like, yeah, maybe do this, I personally am very much against the FIV vaccine. Now, one other thing that I just wanted to mention here that I have read a little bit about is that sometimes people worry that they can get HIV from their cat. And the answer is no. They're very different viruses. And as of right now, we have no evidence that the feline in immunodeficiency virus can transmit to humans. Um, and that's really good news. So don't worry too much about that. And just because your cat gets FIV does not necessarily mean they'll develop kitty AIDS. Kitty AIDS is basically when their immune system completely stops working. Um, some cats will develop it and it's always unfortunate when it does happen, uh, but not all cats will. Hopefully this video made a little bit of sense, guys. Uh, if it didn't, let me know down in the comments. And the next video is going to be FELV or feline leukemia virus. Hopefully you enjoyed that video like and subscribe if you want to be notified when that video goes live and the like always helps out my videos to do a little bit better so have a fantastic rest of your day guys and we'll see you guys in the next video